What's up, everyone? It's your boy Norn Rad eighty nine here, bringing you another rad movie review today to talk Terrifier three. Yes, your boy Norn finally got a chance to check out Terrifier three, which is the third installment in Damien Leon's Terrifier franchise. Today, you're gonna hear my positives, the negatives, and the rad rating, and then I'm gonna send you all home. So let's do this. Roll it. <laughs> Just a quick thought, what's really cool about these glasses is that like, I could kind of look anywhere, but it just constantly looks like I'm looking at the screen. <laughs> but today, like I said, we are here to talk about Terrifier 3. Yes, this is the third installment in the Terrifier franchise, one that had a lot to live up to and is currently breaking records in the theaters and everything is really laying it down as being one of the greatest unrated horror films that has ever reached the theaters and grossing money and everything so Damien Leon should be very proud and they did sign up for Terrifier 4 so there is going to be a fourth installment in this franchise so now let's get right into the positives. So one key positive is that Art the Clown is absolutely an icon. David Howard Thornton I think in this one performance wise this might be my favorite Art the Clown performance he actually gets to go ham gets to do a lot of fun stuff in this one and there's actually a lot of comedy levity moments with art where it's just like really funny compared to like where he's reacting to things or the way he's doing certain faces or certain motions specifically there's one thing in the third act with sienna miller or sienna shaw's character played by lauren lavera when he's going after her in the third act and stuff, and there's a sequence where she's kind of tied to a chair, and I think it's just funny. Every time he walks past her, he kind of slaps her in the head, or he gives her a little slap across the face. It's just really funny. So I think David Howard Thornton gives gets a lot of chances to do a lot of funny stuff and actually emote with the art character in this movie compared to the previous ones. Also, the gore effects, Damien Leon still brought it when it comes to the gore and the kills. There's more kills, and there's more kills spaced throughout the film than all that kind of stuff and there is like i said definitely some very gory moments there's one with the santa claus the shower scene is very epic and there's also a kill that happens to do with sienna's one of her family members in the third act that was really intense that had a kind of like gripping like on the edge of my seat kind of had like my skin like oh like you know boiling a little bit under under my skin because i was like i want to do something i can't do something this is a movie but it was like it's just intense it was very intense and i thought the kills like i said very much ramped up in this one and there's very a lot more in terms of the space throughout the film one other positive i wanted to talk about was the editing i think the editing in this one was actually it's more frantic and more fast paced but i actually think that makes the kill scenes more intense and kind of makes it more gripping because once you're looking at a shot and you're kind of getting comfortable with seeing what's there it cuts to something else and it's so fast paced and it's so intense that it keeps you on the edge of your seat so i actually applaud damien leon and the editors for this film i like the editing in this third film better than the previous ones so, so that's one thing for sure another thing is that i like the fact that sienna shaw is having this character where she's dealing with the ptsd where Damien Leon wrote her, where she's seeing victims. She's having that uh, survivor's remorse type thing going on because she's seeing her friends from the previous film and then also, like I said, just going through a lot and the way she talks about the moments where she went through with art. So that's another fantastic thing about this is that, you know, Lauren Levera really gives that Sienna character a lot of, you know, depth and there's a lot of layers to her character. Another cool positive is they do answer questions and they add some stuff to the lore. They also bring up some more questions. I'll have a little bit of that when we come to the mixed and the negatives, but they do a go. The Damien Leon does go a long way into explaining some of the things, and we do learn some more things about art, 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 and also Vicky. So that's what's really cool is that, like I said, there's some nuggets sprinkled throughout this film, and then we also do learn some more stuff about Sienna that is brought to her by Jonathan. So Jonathan does return. In in this film too and I think his character is a little bit improved from that first film that he was in in the second Terrifier he's kind of more just that annoying brother and kind of character but in this one they give him a little bit more to do with certain moments but then like I said there is some stuff to talk about the mixed and negatives because I don't think this was a perfect movie of course this isn't my favorite horror film of the year it is a banger and it is really a solid watch but there are some problems so let's get into it 
So kicking off the mixed and negatives is that we're going to talk right about Jonathan right away. Is that I like the improvement of what they wanted his character to be in this film, but he's not really in it that much. He's kind of just in it and then gone, and then he's here, and then he's gone. And like I said, it's much more about Art and Sienna. They are kind of the two mainstays in this film, and even Vicky. Vicky's a much more prominent character too, so Jonathan gets kind of put on the back burner a little bit. Also, one other negative I want to talk about is that this is probably probably my biggest just main negative is that there are too many off-screen deaths yes there are more deaths in this film a higher body count but I think there's three total off-screen deaths in this film one of them I understand why no four there's actually four off-screen deaths so two, two of them I kind of understand why because they happen to young child characters so I understand that but then there's also two other ones that happen off screen that I'm kind of like, eh, like what are we doing now? Especially when you go really hardcore and you lean into that graphic nature and what you're going to show us. I think that having off screen deaths, that definitely does hurt your slasher film. One other mixed and negative I want to talk about is that this film does answer some questions that we had about the lore and the beginning of art and what Sienna is and all that kind of stuff. But then this film also does leave you with some questions that will be answered hopefully in Terrifier 4. But one thing for me as being a fan and a viewer of this series so far in this franchise is I really wanted Damien Leon to hammer it down with three films. I kind of miss that era where we had just straight up trilogies, you know, a first part, a second part, and a third part, and just cap it off, you know, like Lord of the Rings, freaking trilogy, and nowadays it kind of feels like, you know, we have to keep going, we have to keep going, and I, I know Terrifier 4, people are going to turn out for it, it's probably going to make just as much money as these previous films and all that kind of stuff, but... I really wanted them to kind of hammer it down, hammer it home in the third film. That, like I said, might just be my personal taste. That's just me as a viewer, not speaking to any of you or anything like that. So that's just a kind of specific mixed and negative when it comes to me. So thanks for sticking around with me all for this rad movie review of Terrifier 3. Please let me know down below in the comment section, have you seen this film? What do you think of this franchise? What do you think of this movie? Where do they rank and all that kind of stuff? I would love to discuss with you down below. As it stands right now as a fan, I probably still like Terrifier 2 better, but I got to give Terrifier 3 some more watches. Terrifier 2 I've seen multiple times. Even the first Terrifier, I've seen that multiple times. This third film I've only seen once all the way through, so that's that's why I got to give this multiple watches before I really nail it down. But as it stands right now, Terrifier 2 is probably still my favorite. Terrifier 3, though, for a rad rating in my book, this film's going to get an 8.5 out of 10. A very solid, very strong holiday slasher. I love the Christmas theme and the Christmas vibes. That's one thing I kind of didn't bring up in the positives. There is a lot of Christmas atmosphere in this film, so that does go a long way. Because, like I said, for me being a horror fan, if you're going to be a horror film set on a holiday, I want to feel the atmosphere. I want to feel Thanksgiving, feel Halloween, or feel Christmas. And this being a Christmas holiday horror film, they definitely do lean into that. And an 8.5, like I said, is a very solid, strong rating. But there are some mixed and negative stuff. We'll see how that lands on multiple watches. But like I said, thanks for sticking around with me all. Please like the video. That definitely helps out the channel. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And have that notification bell poked so you're notified anytime I drop a video, but most importantly, I want y'all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.